Hello, um, so this is an introductory video to x-ray interpretation. I just want to run through the general steps you can go through when interpreting an x-ray using uh, a knee as an example. Um, so a lot of you, especially undergraduate students in early years, uh, may never have really seen an x-ray before, certainly don't know how to interpret it. So this is kind of uh, a very simple introduction. So if you're kind of dragged up, say, by a consultant to look at an x-ray, a good way to buy time is just to go logically from the start. So for example, in this case, you want to look at this x-ray and say this is a right knee x-ray, a right AP knee x-ray. So that's anterior posterior because it's basically going from the front to the back. So this is you looking at the knee straight on. Um, you also, in general, when looking at an x-ray, want to check the patient's name, which should be displayed on the x-ray usually, um, to make sure you're looking at the correct patient because you don't want to be looking at the wrong patient's x-ray. You also want to read the date on the radiograph to make sure you're looking at the latest x-ray or the x-ray that you want to see. So you're not, say, appraising any x-ray from 10 years ago and the patient's, in fact, you know, their joint has changed completely. Um, you also want to look at the technical quality of the x-ray. So I can look at this and say it's of a reasonable quality. Um, the knee is not rotated in the image. It's a proper AP view. Um, the contrast is good. So I can see a reasonable amount of detail. If the contrast was uh, not correct, you would have either a too dark or too light image. And either way, uh, it would not be of the best quality to view. So once you've done that and you're satisfied with the quality of the film, um, you want to start appraising it as far as is it normal. Um, and you'll get better at this as you become more familiar with both usual anatomy on x-rays and how x-rays appear themselves. Um, if you think about x-rays and how they work it's to do with how dense the tissue is and how much uh, how well to what extent they block x-rays so for example bone will always appear much uh, more w brighter white because they block more x-rays whilst the soft tissues will be varying shades of gray because they block varying amounts of x-rays uh, and air which you can see around the borders will be black because it blocks no x-rays so in this case we have the white bone of the femur the soft tissue around it in grey and the black air so in this case I would say this is a right AP x-ray of a knee um, and then I would wish to follow around the bony cortex of the bones looking for any interruptions that may show a fracture so it's a good trick no matter how kind of new to x-rays you are just follow the border of the bone and if there is a strange interruption in it then it could perhaps be a fracture there are lots of things that can fool you into thinking they're fractures um, but you will learn about these as you go along so as I said, this is an AP view, anterior posterior. Um, you should always, always, always have two views when you have an X-ray because otherwise you may miss something apart from say a chest X-ray where you would normally just have an AP view by itself. But that's the exception to the rule. So here is a lateral view of a knee. Um, and so as before, you would praise its quality after checking the patient's name and the date on the radiograph. And also, I forgot to mention, you want to make sure that there's a marker on there so you know that it is definitely right or left limb. So this is the lateral view. Again, you could follow around the bony cortex, real basic stuff at the moment. You know, look for normal anatomy. At this point, when you're very early on, you want to just be able to recognize normal anatomy on an X-ray. And uh, I'll run through that in later videos. So just for this video, I thought I'd quickly at the end just show you what uh, a bad knee looks like. So we saw this knee here, 
which uh, you know looks nice, clean joint space. This one, much reduced joint space. You've got little bony spurs we call osteophytes. You can call it an osteophytic change. Um, so this would be the appearance in osteoarthritis. So you've got also something called uh, subchondral sclerosis here, which is kind of white, uh, increased whiteness, I suppose you would call it, underneath the joint. And here's a really nasty knee uh, of advanced osteoarthritis. Um, and you can see the joint space rubbish. You've got um, subchondral sclerosis. You've got subchondral cysts, which you see in osteoarthritis as well. Um, osteophytes, and you can see the patellofemoral articulation here just completely gone. You've got patella just rubbing against your femur. So um, I hope this was reasonably useful for an absolute beginner video. Um, and good luck.